most people believe in shades of grey or <laughs> yes. white lies yeah. and that white lies are acceptable mm -hmm. and even necessary. Mm -hmm. What do you feel about that? Well, I can see from a human perspective that people believe in shades of grey. Um, you know, that there are what things that are black and there's things that are white and then there's a lot of things in between and they don't like people who are black and white generally and in terms of, you know, the way in which they analyse situations. They like people to have this shades of grey or the feeling of compromise, I suppose, is what it, cre it, it encourages. With regard to white lies, that's what white lies do too. It encourages compromise on the truth. God never compromises on truth. God's truths are fixed and immovable. We can't change them. And in fact, God never wishes to. And God has actually created them in such a, pardon me, in such a way that they cannot be changed. They can only be embraced or ignored. Mm -hmm. But they can't be changed. Now, on earth, what we often want to do with truth is change it. If we look at history, you know, that's why we now call it his story, isn't it? Like, rather than history, because it's somebody's story, which usually has been changed from the actual facts of what actually occurred. There is very little desire, even in most personal relationships, for the individuals in each relationship to actually discover the actual truth about themselves and discover the actual truth about their partner. There are many people currently in relationships who don't want to know if their partner's cheated on them, for example, because they don't want to deal with the pain and suffering that it might expose. So my feelings are, if we really, really understand this element of, or quality of divine truth in that it's fixed and immovable, we will see that truth is black and white. There is no shades of grey from God's perspective. God knows that it is what it is and nothing can change that. What we need to do rather than try to you know, reason that there's all these shades is we need to see that whenever we're thinking in shades you know, or feeling in shades of grey with regard to truth, we are out of harmony with one aspect of divine truth, one aspect of one quality of divine truth and that is that it's immovable. Mm -hmm. Once we discover the actual truth, all the shades of grey disappear and we only have light. We only have the light of truth shown on that particular subject. We know exactly what it is after that point. So any person who in their personal life believes that shades of grey are fine and in their personal life believes that white lies are fine, I suggest to them that they don't understand a quality of absolute truth and that is absolute truth is always black and white, as the saying goes. There is always the absolute truth and only the absolute truth. It is fixed, immovable, nothing can change it. And unless you want that, you're going to keep thinking that everything's shades of grey. And as a result of the shades of grey, you're going to have pain and suffering that comes along from you not accepting that the absolute truth is fixed and immovable. And also from what you've <coughs> said in previous answers that the absolute truth actually brings less pain and suffering. Of course. If most we practice it, you know, we can work against it. Sure. But if we practice it and live in harmony with it, it will always bring less pain and suffering. Yeah, and so when most people say, I told a white lie to save that person's feelings, basically you to didn't. save pain and suffering. You didn't save anything. We're not... Um, that's in an avoidance of the, God's truth about that subject. And it's also an avoidance of pain and suffering. Because what, what happens is that God's truth will always expose an error. Pain and suffering comes from the errors, not from the truth. It's only when the error exists within a person on some subject, they believe something that's not true. Once they come to accept the truth, it's going to be pain and suffering, not because of the truth itself, but because of the error they believe they had to let go of. So, for example, if I believe that my partner is faithful and yet she's not, then I will have pain and suffering as a result of the belief of the error that I have. Mm -hmm. The truth is she is not in that moment. You know, she has not been. And once I come to accept the truth, I will actually have less pain and suffering 
I will understand what's been going on in my relationship better. I'll understand that I didn't have as close relationship with the person as what I believed. I'll understand the reasons why. There's all sorts of new things I can discover by accepting this fact. Yeah, so you're saying that we use white lies actually to avoid pain and suffering. Correct. Um, but not in the way... It's more about... We our, use white lies to avoid our own pain. Our and own pain and suffering. Always. Yes. Always. And in fact, we use sh the whole concept of shades of grey to avoid our own pain and suffering of coming to a consciousness of our own error. Every time we come to a consciousness of our own error, there will be pain and suffering. Once we let go of it, it'll be gone. Once we're living in harmony with truth completely, there will be no pain and suffering anymore because we now have the complete truth. Mm -hmm. So, for example, people often you know, ask me, well, what happens with regard to trust, you know? Well, I know who to trust because I can feel through the truth of who is willing to compromise the truth. People who are willing to compromise truth, I know that I can't trust them. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. And so when somebody comes up to me wanting to be trusted and I know they cannot be trusted because they're willing to compromise truth, I don't trust them. So when they do something, you know, that might be negative towards me or bad, I don't also feel disappointed because I know that they were going to do that, given their condition. That's because I understand there's absolute truth and then there's the people who are out of harmony with absolute truth. People who are out of harmony with absolute truth will always be unable to be trusted on those particular subjects that they're out of harmony with truth on. Mm -hmm. You can't trust them. That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> because they don't understand this basic fundamental principle that once you become in harmony completely with truth, then everything becomes able to be assessed. Everything is able to be examined. The, it shines the light on everything. And that's why often in the Bible, there's the, the, the concept that truth is like a light showing the way. And it is. It's like having a flashlight in a darkened room. Truth is like that. It exposes what's in the room. And uh, without it, you don't have exposed what is in the room. And it's fantastic to expose what's in the room because then you know where everything is, what the situation is, what you can trust, what you can't trust, where you can go, what you can't do, what you can do. You know everything. can make better choices You can make based better choices. Yeah. yeah. Whereas if everyone comes to the room with all of their white lies and nobody wants to expose Which any truth. Which means there's no light in the room. It was all yes. shades of grey everywhere and all of the chairs, tables and all the other things that are in the room could be tripped over, fell over, tripped upon, hit, hit against and potentially you could die in the room <laughs> if you didn't know what was in the room, right? Yeah. And, what, and, and you ran into some corner and got hit on a corner or something in the wrong spot, you know, but once you have the light of truth in that room, now your existence is much safer, it is much easier, is much, you have much more freedom, you have much more understanding, you can also have much more compassion. So there's also a heap of emotions now that you can have. So, so I would always encourage people to, to always gravitate towards truth. Gravi you know, instead of going back to the white lies and going back to the shades of grey, always understand that truth is like a bright light that keeps getting brighter because it's going to be infinitely expanding, so it's going to keep getting brighter but it's like a bright light that keeps getting brighter as your days progress, if you like, and therefore you see more, you understand more, you, you know what to do more. You understand how to exercise your free will inside of that truth now in a manner that is not going to create pain and suffering for yourself or other people. Mm -hmm. So we might <coughs> use white lies to avoid truth in the short term but mm -hmm. ultimately things will become more painful exactly and if well it's we... like it's like turning off the flashlight in a room full of things why would you want to do that all you're going to end up with is tripping over a lot of it yeah <laughs> which exactly. is what people finish up doing yeah yeah, yeah. okay thank you mm. another reason why i feel people do this this thing of you know having white lies or you know wanting to believe in shades of gray and so forth is that they are constantly in fear in the end of truth. They're afraid of truth. And logically, there is no good reason to be afraid of truth. If there's anything to be afraid of, it's error, not truth. <laughs> like, and there's no logical good, re logical good reason for uh, being afraid of truth. 
Fr truth is only going to help you in your life. It's not going to harm you. And I, and I don't understand, uh, uh, when I say I don't understand, from a logical perspective, you, there is really no good reason for rejecting truth, right? From an emotional reason, there are millions of reasons why a person might reject truth, but none of, but all of that is just an avoidance of a specific emotion. So the main reason why people avoid truth, of course, is because they're avoiding a specific emotion that exposing the error would create in them. And that's all they're trying to avoid. So I find that's quite sad. And we, we find a lot of people are very afraid of divine truth for that reason. They're very afraid of coming along to a seminar for that reason. They're very afraid of what might get exposed. They, they even don't talk to us you and I, as you know, mm -hmm. because they were afraid of what AJ might say or Jesus might say to them. So I feel the majority of people who are afraid of what I might say to them have a, an illogical viewpoint with regard to truth. It makes no sense to be afraid of somebody giving you a light mm -hmm. and exposing the world around you, the room I in agree. which you live. Yes. All right. It only may, and yet I, I find quite remarkable, the opposite often occurs. We're not afraid of the people who want us to remain in darkness. At the same time, we're afraid of, the, of somebody who wants to give us a light. <laughs> and, uh, and obviously, you know, God is always attempting to give us the light of God's truth, the light of absolute truth in our lives every single moment. And so if we honour that, we will not revert to the shades of grey thinking or the, or the white lies thinking. We will want to honour the fact that it's only the truth that is going to make our life easier. It's only the truth that is going to result in our freedom. Lovely. Hmm.